students and to other chefs so that kimchi can be a part of the, the English life, British life, or UK life. So, and, and, and the third part is students who participated uh, online, offline, here, because you will be the Gordon Ramsay of tomorrow, and so, and, and one of you may become a kimchi master, so that you can like globalize kimchi. So thank, uh, so thank you very much in advance for that. Uh, and but I really want kimchi to be a part of your life. So uh, so enjoy the the session today, and thank you for coming today. Very thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kim. Uh, incredibly wise words indeed. Uh, and, and food really is uh, a, a communication tool. So there's no better way of being able to communicate than sitting down in a social environment and conversing over some really, really good food. And that's what it's all about. So thank you very, very much for that. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you to Judy Jew. And also we've got Joseph uh, Sullivan here who's going to take us through. But Judy, all oh, over oh, to gonna, you. Oh, we're going to talk first. Yeah, okay. yeah, please do, please do. <laughs> I was going to get down to business. Okay. Wait, no, no, I'm really happy to get down to business. But just e explain just a little bit about what we're going to learn tonight. Well, tonight, um, I'm particularly um, honored because not only is everybody in the room going to participate in a Kim Jong, which is basically a kimchi party, but this is also a virtual Kim Jong. So hopefully thousands of people <laughs> online are going to be joining in um, in making kimchi together tonight. And it is actually Kim Jong season. It's November. So in Korea, every year in November, all the families and communities get together to make kimchi. So it's a very, very special and symbolic time. And I do like this notion of food dis diplomacy because, yes, the best way to make peace is through people's stomachs, <laughs> I think. Totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. Thank you. Right. So any for, you know, all yours, Judy. Okay. Joe, over to you. Good evening. Okay. So my name's Joe Sullivan. I'm one of the chef lecturers here. I've been here for about six or seven years. Um, until recently, I hadn't cooked lots of Korean food. Some of my students that are here with me tonight, um, we've done two or three kimchi demonstrations through the Korean, Korean Embassy and the international team. Um, and it's, it's been a real eye-opener for me. It's something that I now have on my menus upstairs in the college. It's changed the way that I cook food. Uh, I have a Korean dish, as I suggested, at least twice a week upstairs. Or Korean-inspired, I like to call it. I don't always get it correct. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so, um, you know, uh, we prepared everything as Judy has asked us to this evening. Um, she seems happy enough with everything we've done. <laughs> but, um, and I've had some students, I've got Korean students here, and also people who are interested in Korean food who've been able to have their input. So we've been able to make sure that we got things as correct as we could. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah. I think we're going to... Yep. We're going to get on with it. You guys, are you guys ready? Okay, so I would first like to know who today is it their first time making kimchi? Oh, a lot of kimchi virgins in the room. This is so exciting. I love it. So aren't you lucky that your first time's with me? Okay, great. And um, do, does anybody really know what kimchi means? So what, like, what is it? Can I get some... Participation. Robin, what is kimchi? <laughs> um, it's a, like a style. Yes, okay, so that, that is correct, but kimchi, and I don't know how many people actually know this, is actually an umbrella term for over 200 official different varieties of kimchi. So you can kimchi anything. Kimchi is a verb, I use it as a verb. Uh, you can kimchify different dishes, but you can make kimchi out of many different fruits and vegetables, pretty much anything. I personally have made kimchi out of green mangoes. I've made it out of eggplant, you know, uh, or aubergine in this country. You know, you can make kimchi out of, out of broccoli, cucumbers, radish, anything that will stand up to the fermentation process, even gr green apples, you can make into a kimchi. But kimchi is also like the spaghetti sauce of Italy, it is the spaghetti sauce of Korea, and that means that every single family, 
Every single province, every single region has their own special version. So my kimchi and my family is going to taste different than my neighbor's kimchi and their neighbor's kimchi, etc. And if I'm in the north of Korea, it's going to taste a bit different than if you're in the south of, of Korea. So it is a very personal thing. Um, people get together and make it every year. The only thing that I can kind of equate it to in the West is almost like a sewing bee. You know, you, when you guys are quilting bee, where everybody gets together and sews and quilts together. So in Korea, everybody gets together and makes kimchi together. And they put all different types of ingredients. And people pass these recipes down through their families like heirlooms. It's, it's treasured, it is, it, and it's often said that you're not really ready to get married as a female in Korea until you can make your own kimchi. That's not necessarily true these days, but I like to, I, I kind of tease all my cousins because they, my, my aunt still makes all the kimchi for all of the family and they never make it, but they're going to have to learn. So anyway, um, now kimchi, Tonight, we are going to make a cabbage version, so what Robin said. So most usually when people say kimchi, it commonly refers to the cabbage version, which in layman's terms does refer to a spicy type of sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, obviously the German fermented vegetable, and kimchi is our fermented vegetable. Both are cabbages, but we just add a whole bunch of smattering of other ingredients. Now, there are white kimchis also. Kimchi does not have to be spicy. So all your friends who are, you know, scared of spice, they could still eat kimchi and still enjoy it. Um, I personally love the spice, but kimchi's spice wasn't introduced until the 16th century. Um, chilies are not native to Korea. Kimchi actually dates back all the way to the Shila dynasty and, and before 13th century, but originally it was just preserve, just the preservation of vegetables. It was just a salted type of thing because Korea is very cold and we have four distinct seasons, as you probably know. And so there, there was a necessity to um, preserve vegetables and to preserve fruits. And that's how fermentation came along. The chilies were introduced later as when Portuguese missionaries were traveling with Japanese troops. Chilies stuck like a vengeance and the Koreans embraced it. They love chilies and it is an integral part of Korean culture now. In the same way, Korean kimchi is an integral part of the Korean table. So much so that Koreans often say that they have not eaten unless they have kimchi. It is on the table for every single meal. You can go to Chinese restaurants and not have rice. You can go to Italian restaurants and not have bread, whatever. A true Korean meal is not complete unless you have kimchi on the table. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 365 days a year. And yes, breakfast, okay? And so it is consumed in copious amounts. I think um, in Korea annually, each person will consume about 36 kilos of kimchi in a year, which is a lot, and all different kinds. And so often when you sit down for a banquet in Korean dinners, there will be many different types of kimchi. Um, and I'm going to keep talking, so why don't we cook as I talk, because I could talk forever. And so this is going to start out tonight with some cabbage. Now, this is Napa cabbage, which is similar to Korean cabbage, but not entirely the same. If you get cabbages in Korea, they are much denser, harder, and massive. Each head will weigh about um, five pounds, which is like like, uh, how much is my mouth? <laughs> like, 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 like three kilos. So they're really, really, really big. They are denser, they're big and leafy, they're, they're quite heavy, and they have um, a bit less water in them. Absolutely huge. So the cabbages that we get here are a little bit different. I find the Korean kimchi cabbage is actually a bit sweeter also. Has a bit more of a coolness and a crispiness about it. It kind of tastes like autumn, if you were to put autumn into flavors. And that's why you make kimchi in the autumn time too, at the harvest season. So this cabbage has been brined already. Now we brine the cabbage for two reasons, because that is the start of the fermentation process is the salt, but also we need to kill the bad bacteria that exists in the vegetables also. We wanna promote the good bacteria, which Elaine will talk about more and to promote your gut health, but we also have to make sure that the um, vegetable ferments and it doesn't rot. Okay, so this has been brining for about 24 hours, I think maybe longer, but you want to achieve anything between a 10 to 15% salt solution, okay, depending on how salty you want it. I think, what did you guys get in the end? Yeah, I think about 10%. Uh, 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 about 10%. Now, I use Korean solar salt, which I think is the best salt in the world, of course. It's full of minerals and all the things. But the salt that you have at home is always going to be different, so just taste it. 
Salt differs greatly across the globe, so just taste it. It needs to taste palatable, and then if it tastes palatable and it, it doesn't feel overly salty, just, just your best gut is, is your taste buds. And so this has been going for 24 hours, and it's also been draining. And so that's gonna um, be a bit dry when we wanna work, work with it, but you can try it at this point if you want to. So it should be nice and salty, go ahead and try it. Salty, but not too salty, but it has, has a nice crispiness about it. Right? A little bit of an addictive quality. These, these are very important things, aren't they, to know what it should be like in each stage. Absolutely. So kimchi is always made to taste. Okay, and this is also why my family's kimchi is going to taste different than your kimchi. And even tonight, everybody's kimchi at everybody's table will probably taste different. Now, there are a few fundamental ingredients when making kimchi. Um, and so we are going to put everything in, um, in actually um, a food processor because we're going to use ginger, very, very good antioxidant ingredient, lots of great flavor, all the wells with some nice fragrance, a whole smattering, almost an offensive amount of garlic. <laughs> I like my kimchi quite punchy and garlicky, but if... Yeah, no, I, no, yeah, no, this is... I was reassured that I needed plenty of garlic. <laughs> plenty of garlic. If you don't want to use as much, don't use as much. It's absolutely fine. I have some friends who, who use half of this. I don't think it tastes as good, but I like my food to be quite punchy and fiery and vibrant. Like I always, you know, I always say that you know, the food of a country reflects the people. You know, I've mentioned Italy before. I feel that the Koreans are known as the Italians of Asia. We're dramatic. We wear our hearts on our sleeve. What you see is what you get. Fiery, punchy, spirited people, and so is the kimchi. So I like to put a lot of garlic into it. And then we also have gochugaru. So gochu means chili and garu means flakes. So I want you also just, just to try this, okay? So not all gochugarus are created equal. Some are spicier than others. We're gonna use a coarse flake. You can see this, but look at this color. This is a beautiful, bright, natural color. And this is made from drying Korean chilies and only using the skins. And this is how it has that beautiful, beautiful color. And the, the Korean chilies are normally dried outside under the sun and, um, and it gets this beautiful color and grounded down it's just just the skin, so you can try it. It's not too spicy. It's got a bit of earthiness to it. Has, has a bit of fruitiness to it. Doesn't blow your head off. If you don't want to use all of it, you don't have to, okay? Again, this is, this is to taste, okay? I, I, if you don't, <laughs> is, it, is it too hot for you? You could use a fraction of it if you want to. Okay, this is why it's important to taste your kimchi at every stage. And you have to understand that also, once it starts fermenting, it's gonna change during the fermentation process, it'll mellow out also, okay? And then we've got three other ingredients in these little jars, right? So we've got some anchovy sauce. This is similar to fish sauce. The Korean anchovy sauce is a bit funkier. Sometimes it's a little bit cloudier. It's cloudier, it's pungent. It has a lot of great umami flavors. This is why Korean kimchi is not vegetarian because we have fish sauce and we also have another great ingredient it's called seujat. Yeah, so this I'm is yeah right they look like krill right yeah, that's so, a new thing for me yeah. right? the first time i've seen those today and um, if you look at that you can smell it it's very salty you can try it if you want to it's very 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 salty but this is a fermented salted shrimp okay and this is the secret that really gives kimchi that deep complex umami flavor you, you really can't make kimchi without this stuff. And this is called, it's a type of jotka. So this is a fermented seafood. Yeah, it makes your face go like that, right? It has that stink, it has that funk, okay? And that stink and that funk is what kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen some reactions. That's what gives kimchi its great flavor. It's kind of like a ripened cheese, like a telegio or a, a poisse or a goat cheese. It's got that funkiness that is also incredibly addictive later on when you taste it. So we're going to be adding this also. And then we have something else that's quite nice. It probably is labeled plum on the top of it. This is plum extract. 
This is what gives the kimchi its fruitiness, its fragrance. It mellows out some of the spices, a bit of sweetness. Um, I love this, this ingredient in, in my kimchi. Not all kimchi recipes include it, but I think it's, it's one of the essential things. And if you do try to buy some plum extract, uh, make sure there's a pure one. It's 100% plums and doesn't have any type of corn syrup or sugar added, added into it. And then for tonight, we're also gonna add some other vegetables. We have some spring onions and also some carrots. Um, you can add radish, you can add chives, um, garlic chives, you know, um, in the, um, you know, any type of, of vegetables that you want to, you can kind of put in there to bulk it up. So in your bowl, you are going to um, put in your garlic as much as you want to. I'm gonna put all of it. And my ginger. Actually, I'm just going to put it all in, in, in here. And your food processors are located on the back wall. So yeah, you'll you have to go and use the processors yeah. at the back. So you can make your mixture in your bowl, and then you're going to take it to the food processor in the back, and then you're going to blitz it all up and blend it into a paste. And so you're going to have to add your liquids into it also to get that paste going. And then um, and then Joe, Chef Joe. Yeah. And so then you could take turns. The stock. Yes, yeah, coming now. Yeah. yeah, but you could have it on the back. Yeah, so yeah. and you can loosen it on the back. Yeah. yeah. And then also. On the back, um, when you're blitzing it all up, there's going to be some stock. And this stock is made, it's called a dashima stock, and that's made from seaweed, some more dried seafood, so dried shrimp, some dried anchovies, as well as kelp and, and whatever else you want to put in it. And so that's gonna help loosen it up and that's gonna be on that back table and there'll be some chefs assisting you. But again, do taste your paste and if you want to add less of the chili, you whatever, and you can give it a mix, but it's going to taste quite spicy and pungent. That's what, that's what you want, yeah. Okay. The stock is coming out now, guys. Oh, yeah. sorry. Your stock is... But you, you can put it on the back. You put it on the back, guys. Yeah, so back. you want... Um, you're you're going to... Uh, I don't have the chefs help them yeah, because, go. um, because you want to eyeball the stock. Yeah. It's always something, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's okay because you add it in here anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, to just 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 to let it down a bit. So you want to add enough stock into your kimchi paste so that it's spreadable. Because you're going to be spreading this paste all over your cabbage. So when you're in the back station and you start blitzing up your your, your paste. You're going to add a bit of stock a little bit at a time. So we've got a question here, Judy, from yes, the question. chef at the Royal Household. Yeah, you can put it in and you're going to blitz it up. Yep. Anything yet? I think it's okay. I'll try it 
behind. This should be fine. Okay, so there's a bit of a queue over there for the blenders, yeah? You'll just have to be patient for a moment. Smell it. This whole room's gonna smell amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's about right. Okay, guys, if you can see on the stage, Judy's added all the ingredients to the, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the mix. Yeah, so we seem to have people pouring things from other bowls. It should all go into the blender. And then you loosen it with a bit of the stock. You can put it all in there. Yeah, mix it, mix it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you take it off? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. If you want to put all of it, you can. You can. You don't have to. I think I added the chili too early. That's okay. That's fine. It, yeah? yeah, yeah. You can blend it. Yeah. What's going on over here? Uh, we're going to make a vegetarian option. Yeah, we've got a vegetarian option over here, Judy. Vegetarian's fine. <laughs> okay, so you want to put all your ingredients into a bowl and take them over to the blenders and blend it all in one go. Yes? Thank you. And then do you have your um, do, you, do you have your stock? Right? Yeah. Okay, so if no, you want, I already done you did. I okay. have to add more. The, the stock is, is did you add this? No, not so yet. Oh, you I need to add that. Just enough dangerous in this way. Yeah, quite a thin paste. Okay, so not enough garlic or not enough for the chili. Should they add this? More chili. You added hardly any of your yeah, chili. Yeah, you some more. Yeah, I put some more in there. <laughs> all, all of this. All of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. All of that. Yeah. Did you put your, your garlic in? Not all the garlic. Okay. It's a little bit of salty stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, yeah. It's very salty. Yeah. You can put half. You, 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 yeah, if you want to. You try. You try. Yes. <laughs> So you put um, a lot of that stock in. Uh, do we get to that too much stock? I think so. Um, I think you're going to have to put more chilies in yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, you know what, take, take, I'm trying to think of how to remedy that. You're, you, can put, you, can put, you can put more chili in it. We add, we add all the plants. So yeah. We add all the, uh, we yeah, you put the ginger. Yeah. yeah. You grind it down the ginger. Yeah, so it should be more like pasty. Like more. Yeah. It's just perfect. No, this is good. This is good. This is good. We added too much liquid. I think so. Um, 
But you know, it's it's getting there. It's 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 getting thicker. Here, we can. Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. Here, take some of my paste. Here, my mine is on the thicker side, so. Sorry, I might have given you a. a you might have a whole garlic clove in there. Well, anyway, yeah. And now what should they do? Ginger. Oh, you yeah. had to blitz it. We've done the ginger. The ginger yeah. Blitz. I have to go to the blender. And yeah. Then, yeah. And this one I have to cut. There you go. That. No, not those. No, no, no. Not that yet. And this one is the ginger. No, no, no. Just the ginger. Yeah. So I have to go back. Yes. Or you could try to use this one. I have to go back. Yeah. for everybody to uh she's got a yeah yeah we'll get you a uh yeah this you can leave we can oh yeah we had to put it in the yeah we'll we'll, 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 we'll yeah we'll, we'll blitz it down for you perfect that's good thank you I know. I mix this. No, no, no. You can just do this separately, and then, if you want, you could put it in there too. But it's, yeah. Oh, it's because you're you're missing this. Oh yeah, we're missing that. Okay. Stop, 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 with your hands. Is that silly? It's, it's okay if it's a little chunky. It's all right. Oh, is it? Oh, you want to come back? Yeah, come back. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he knows how to use this thing. <laughs> Okay, so those of you who have your paste, you can mix your carrots into your paste, which you've started doing already, and also the spring onions. Have your paste. Now you can mix your carrots into. You can use your hands, or you can use your uh, spatula. You want to just mix the carrots. Yep. You can drain them. You guys all have a colander. Just you don't want to get the water in. Yeah. Like a paste. 
It's like a paste, yep. Yeah. It's fine. You can also put in the spring onions in there. If, if you want to um, cut them down a little bit, you can make them skinnier. Slice the, the uh, spring onions. Yeah. yeah, if you want to. Yeah, or okay. you could just put them in. Yeah. Are the students helping them there? Yeah. How are we doing, everybody? How's everybody doing? Has everybody made their paste? So you, uh, once you're done making you your paste, you, you can you put can your carrots into your paste mix now. Mix your carrots in, but drain your carrots According first. To the chef, Don't yes. get the water in. So mix your carrots in, and mix in the spring. How many onions. more people to make paste still? You can cut the spring onions thinner, so they're more like matchsticks if you want to lengthwise. Yeah, I don't know where the rest of it went. Oh, okay, okay, excellent. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, let me. Or is that your stall? Unless it's too. Yeah. <laughs> So what, um, what consistency would you say it should be? What's the you best description? You need to um, make your paste, loosen it up with enough stock so that it is spreadable. You don't want it too thick. It has to be a nice, spreadable consistency. So it's like a, it's like a, a toothpaste, I would say, yeah. Toothpaste. <laughs> like toothpaste. Okay, we've got a couple more people just finishing off their paste. I'm reliably informed you can put your carrot in there now once you've blended it. Keep that in case you need to add more. Give it a mix later. Or 
was like one big chunk in there. Yeah, I can see it. One big chunk. There it is. There's one big chunk I'm watching. Yeah, go around and around. I suppose in hindsight, it could have chopped you up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I think the ginger's causing a bit of a problem. I think in hindsight, I could have chopped it up a bit more. I think that should be all right now. More than enough there. Thank you. Yeah, got more than enough there. Yeah, yeah, okay, you just got the last few yeah. people blending their kimchi uh, marinade now at the back. Most people have got their carrots in, spring onions. It's a bit of a messy job, I think. <laughs> Do not add the soapy water to your kimchi. <laughs> That would be disastrous. Have we added soapy water to someone's kimchi? <laughs> no, we have no. not. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, listen up, everybody, yeah? Is everybody back at their tables? All right, so for those of you who haven't done it, drain your carrots and then add the carrots to your paste and then add the uh, spring onions to your paste. If you, if you want to, you can cut your spring onions down a bit further lengthwise, make it skinnier, at least in half and then just mix your paste in with your carrots and your spring onions, right? Now you can also taste again. Spicy, salty, fruity, sour, bitter, depth of flavor. They say that kimchi has, you know, Korean cuisine is founded on the rule of five. Every meal should have the five flavors, the five colors, and the five textures. And people often say that kimchi actually has all five flavors, colors, and textures in it as well. So you get all the complexity of tastes of salty, sweet, spicy, bitter, sour, everything. A bit of, you know, hotness. But it's, it's addictive, right? It's a bit more if you want to have a... So this is kind of like a, a fresh kimchi paste. Now, what you're gonna do on your cutting boards, make sure your cutting board is clean, is you're going to lay one of your brined cabbage heads down, the cut side up. Okay, has everyone got their cabbage out? Yeah. Now you can, um, you can everybody's got your gloves on. Now if, if we're in Korea, they would say we're wimps because we got our gloves on, but I might put, I might put my gloves on, but. Korean, um, this way of making kimchi uh, with your hands, there's a term called the sonmat. And sonmat means literally the taste of the hand. And that is something that you cannot replicate. And this is why, you know, um, a lot of people, when they make their kimchi, it has that 
that, that touch, that touch that you make it, you know, when your mom makes something, it tastes so much different. If your dad makes something, you make, that is the, the magic touch of your hand, and that comes with the son mat, the taste of the hand. And so, what is the phrase again? What son mat. Yeah, I think it's literally it's hand taste. Yeah, and lots yeah. of cultures have the same thing, I think it's the Absolutely. same. You know, you know, growing up in London, you know, I've got lots of cultures, you know, I don't consider myself to be particularly British or English. I'm a London chef, which means I can sort of do what I want, really. <laughs> So, so you want to make sure this when you're making this by, by hand, you give it that that love. You're massaging and giving your your cabbage a bit of love. So you're going to take a big handful of your paste, and starting with the outermost leaf, you're going to hold up the rest of it. You're going to spread the paste over the leaves, and you want to make sure you get the the inside of the roots, and then you're going to peel each layer back and then do the same thing, spreading it out, just, just like that. You can, you can get carrots in there, you can get some spring onions in there. I just want to make sure you get into the root, and you're going to keep doing that layer by layer. I think, layer I think this layer. is the thing, that what's fantastic as well, as I was saying about growing up in London and learning from Italians, is once somebody's actually shown you properly how to do something, you understand it so much more. You know, just watching you do that today, that's yeah. not how I did it the first time. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and so you want to make sure every bit of the cabbage is covered with this red paste. Each, each layer. And you can make, you know, you can get some carrots in there, get the spring onions in there. And then, once you are done, I think actually we need the, um, the jars at some point. You're going to repeat for all three of your cabbage heads or four of your cabbage heads. So Sorry, make Judy, sure what did that you say you, about uh, the jars? I said we can, we can get the jars out soon because we're going to start packing. Um, so we're going to get this all covered. Even the little leaves on the heart those sweet little leaves in the center, the heart of the cabbage. Make sure you get into the root, every single crevice. All right, just like that. And then once you're done, you're going to swaddle your kimchi. Swaddle, swaddle, swaddle. <laughs> Swallow it, yeah. You're going to swaddle it like a baby, and you're going to take the outermost leaf, and kind of wrap it around and make a little package, like a little baby. <laughs> and you're gonna cradle it, your little kimchi baby. So you're, then you're gonna do that and you're gonna repeat for all of them. Okay, so the students are bringing around the jars now as well, guys, yeah, which are in the bags here. Does anybody notice the smell of the room now? <laughs> it's amazing. It's going to take days for them to get this stink out of the room. <laughs> so. It's okay. This, this room always smells of food, really. Yeah. It always smells of something wonderful. Definitely. Today it's extra wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, oh, you're going to swallow. So, so you're just going to kind of bring those top leaves under and take, and take one of the outer leaves and wrap it around. So it's like a little, a, a little parcel, you see? Just like that. Yeah. Make your kimchi babies. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll show you how to pack them. So you have these kilner jars. Here. Okay, if you can look at what's going on with the jars, please, everybody. Yeah. Um, now, this is quite messy. Now, you're going to pack them. Is everybody paying attention? On the bottom. And you're going to pack them just on top of each other. Just like that. And pressing down firmly. And then you're going to pack all of your cabbage um, heads in there just like that. 
And feel free to, if you have some extra pace, put some paste in between. Fill up the uh, holes in there. Put some extra carrots in between. And then put in another layer. Uh, I just wondered, Judy, is anything else, if you haven't got a Kilner jar, you could use? Oh, yeah. So um, I actually don't even use Kilner jars. <laughs> I use plastic containers. OK, um, that's good. Now, the one thing that you want to be careful with your fermentation process. Um, OK, so you can use jars. Um, a lot of, a lot of yes, question. No, it shouldn't be watery. The paste? No, no there sh it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be liquidy. Oh, it's the brine. Yeah, so get rid of the brine. Yeah, it, sh it should have been drained. Yeah, your cabbage sh sh should be dry. Um, so in Korea, um, everybody has kimchi refrigerators. And the kimchi refrigerators are set at the perfect temperature for fermentation. And they also keep the kimchi um, from smelling up the rest of your food. Because kimchi is potent, it will invade your refrigerator. It will make it smell. <laughs> It'll make anything around it smell and taste of, of, of kimchi, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your point of view. Like somebody uh, from Doctor Who. Exactly. It's pervasive. So how's everybody doing? OK. The fermentation, yeah, you need to do it with, it yes. Is very, very you, 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 make, you make the, um, you know, the salted shrimp, you can make that out of anything. Oh, right, so you okay. make that out of fish, out of squid, out of oysters, all, octopus, all kinds of things. But you wouldn't want to actually add whole shrimps into something. Yeah, like that, uh, yeah you can. You whole, can. Whole oysters, whole octopus, oh, right. oysters, okay. yeah, all that stuff, yeah, definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. What time is it? Okay, all right, so we're gonna finish. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now, if I could get everybody's attention again, please. Hello, listen, everybody. Yeah. Can you listen up? Thank so, you. So, um, as you're packing your kimchi away, now the one thing that you have to be careful because these are glass jars is that because your kimchi is alive, they, it can explode. Okay, so in the fermentation process, it ferments and it releases carbon dioxide, okay? The, you have to burp your kimchi. You have to open the jar and let it breathe, otherwise it will explode. And that'll be a disaster in your fridge. That's happened to me, okay? So that is a very important thing, which is why a lot of times, like you can buy kimchi vessels that are, or fermentation jars that actually have some type of aeration. In the olden days, in Korea, they used to um, ferment kimchi in clay ceramic jars called ongi. And um, they used to bury them outside. And they would bury them because, it, obviously, if you put something underground, it's at a cooler temperature. The best temperature to ferment kimchi is around, um, gosh, this is my American, it's 65 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's, it is in the recipe what it is in, in, in Celsius. And if it's too hot, if it's too hot, it'll ferment too quickly and become sour. If it is too cold, it doesn't develop all that nice bacteria and all that funky flavor. So I find that 65, 67 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of that sweet spot, which is generally room temperature. But taste it. Taste your kimchi after a few days. Keep tasting it. You're going to notice that it changes. You can. Um, you know, press it down and, and release the, the bubbles. You'll see that it'll start bubbling. And um, 
and try it. Now you can put some of the extra paste on top. And so because kimchi was always made outside, and a lot of the ingredients like the gochugaru, the chili flakes, are also dried outside. In Korea, we always say that the secret ingredient in Korean cooking are the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the wind, because it is so much of it has to do with um, just preparing things outside, fermenting outside, and adding all of nature's elements. So that, that, that's actually the other five of the rule of five, or the five elements that go into Korean cuisine and cooking. Yes? How often do you need to fast? I would do it at least once every two days, if not every day. Just give it, just give it a bit of a breathe. It depends how fast it ferments. Now, you would leave it at room temperature for about, so, so. Listen up, guys. Okay. So you guys all have the recipe on your table. So take the recipe, okay? It explains it more. Um, but I usually leave my kimchi out at room temperature for anywhere up to two weeks, depending on the weather. It's a bit chilly these days, so you can leave it out maybe even longer, but taste it. Once it has the flavor that you like, you could put it in the fridge. The fridge does not stop fermentation, it'll slow it down. It'll keep on fermenting. Now the big question I always get asked is that, does my kimchi ever go bad? Not really, okay? People will eat kimchi two, three years old. It is totally normal. Once it starts getting funkier and more ripe, you start cooking with it. And this is where kimchi makes any dish taste better. And in Korea, we will make soups and stews with kimchi. We will steam it with fish. We will grill it on barbecues. We will fold it into pancakes, into dumplings, into fried, you know, and, and anything like fried little fritters. And it, it, it really makes, I mean, I'm seeing kimchi show up on so many different menus around London. Even my local cheese toasty shop has a kimchi. Um, cheese toasty, it's fantastic. Kimchi is great with cheese. We do a dish kimchi mac and cheese at my restaurant Solbird. I know you guys are enjoying some of the drinks and the iced teas from, from Solbird. And so, do you know, it's great on top of burgers. It is another type of pickle. So, I even do a fish and chips with a kimchi tartar sauce, which Sounds is fantastic. fantastic. So, you mix kimchi into the tartar sauce. And so it is, um, it is truly a versatile. Does that really work? That sounds fantastic. It's so good. You just give it a bit of a drain and you yeah. chop it up. And instead of all the capers yeah, and, all, and the pickles and groceries, you use kimchi. So I'll definitely do that yeah. this week. And kimchi, kimchi bernays is fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So you can take so many of the recipes that you're making at home and, and then make, make kimchi. And you I can quite put, like the you, uh, reference to funky. Funky sounds it is, to be the It thing. is funky. It is funky, has a deep flavor. It is um, complex. And that comes from all of the great ferment, the fermented ingredients, the anchovy sauce, the sewujet, the salt salted shrimp, all of that coming together makes this dish taste extra special. It's yeah. amazing. I've seen so many different recipes, and even your yeah. recipe today wasn't yeah. the recipe I made last yeah. time. So, so you, can, you can kimchify anything. So I encourage you guys all to take your kimchi home, let it ferment. You can even see the different degrees of the different colors of everybody's kimchi. Some people are quite light, some people are quite dark. Some people, you know, everybody's kimchi tonight is going to taste different, which I think is something beautiful and, and wonderful. Yeah. So throw it on top of anything. I mean, I was mixing kimchi with hummus, and it was delicious. <laughs> so. Okay, so uh, are you, you, you ready to close it up now? Or I think you, uh, so. So um, yeah. any other questions? Has anybody, anybody got any questions at all for Judy? I, I would love, yes, questions. Savoy cabbage will work. You can absolutely make kimchi out of cabbage and savoy cabbage. It will not taste the same. It will not taste the same. Savoy cabbage is quite um, dense and harder. It's a different texture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to hear from a couple people what they would like to put kimchi on. What they would like to, what, what would you foresee yourself putting kimchi on? Scrambled eggs, pizza. Has anybody got anything they'd like to put? What? Like to put kimchi on? Scr scrambled eggs, yeah. 
Anything and in an omelet? It'll be great in an omelet with some cheese and ham. Any pizza? Okay. Fish? White fish. Be great. Anything else? Yeah, maybe into a pasty or a steak pie, a little kimchi yeah, on the side. I think a pasty, yeah, I think yeah. I might, yeah, might okay. go for a pasty. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you so much for making kimchi with me. Thank you, thank you Judy. Yeah.